And we're back for another episode of my weekly show, Real Sense Now, featuring yours truly, Dawood Bedrosian, of course. If you're tuning in for the first time and you don't know what the show is about, well, we've designed a show so that you can get to know everything that you need to know about real estate. The show gives you the facts on real estate as a trend, uh, real estate trends as a buyer or seller, some tips and tricks on maybe if you want to do a fix and flip, maybe you're looking for some lucrative investments or, or you're not really sure where to invest in the market. We are here to basically show you how owning real estate is the cheat code to your success plus a whole lot more. Today's a really special episode because it kind of takes off from, you know, the, the, the typical kind of uh, topics or run of the mill that we have. And it's been, you know, an interesting week, an inspirational week, I should say that. There's been a lot of things going on in the market. There's been a lot of shifts that I've been noticing. And I figured, why not talk about what's been going on in the market in order for us to be able to best serve our clients? There's a lot of people that think that now is not a good time to buy a property. Or maybe I should wait out. Or even if you're a seller, maybe now is the best time to, buy, to sell your property. And really what I like to do in the first segment, like I do every single time, is give you a sense of what's really going on. Hence the name, Real Sense Now. The housing market is going through a very interesting period now that we're in mid-2021. We have record high levels of appreciation. We're looking at appreciation levels of about 13 to 14% increases, record home prices, and also record low interest rates. Yet banks are hesitating to lend to a certain extent. And what do I mean by that? There's a thing called the Mortgage Credit Availability Index, which reached about 870 in June 2006. And now we are hovering at about 118 points in June. So how does this Mortgage Credit Availability Index work? So a decline in, in the acronym MCAI indicates that lending standards are tightening, which is what's happening right now, while increases in the index are indicative of loosening credit. So banks are lending to really high qualified buyers, which is a really great situation to be in, which also ensures that these applicants have lots of income verification. They may even bank at those banks. They have a lot of money in the bank, they have high credit scores, and of course this is a comforting thought, especially if you're worried about what took place in 2008. But we also have a foreclosure moratorium that's coming to an end. There's a lot of people who haven't made their payments, they've been in default for about three months plus, and the banks regard these as non-performing loans. So you don't have to be a genius to realize that COVID caused a massive recession in our economy. And lots of people have lost their jobs. And a lot of the people are the same people that own those homes that they're in. Yet, it would make sense for banks to say, you know what? It's time to sell your house so we can get rid of these non-performing loans and basically convert them into uh, foreclosures. Yet, because of what's been happening with this moratorium, that hasn't been able to take place. Now, the good news compared to what happened over 10 years ago is that the bank that have these loans are basically looking at loans where when the owner can go ahead and sell their property, they have equity built into the property already. They can easily sell off the property, pay off the loan, and still walk up with then some. But what the banks don't want to do is sit on seriously delinquent loans because they'll need to use those reserves uh, of cash that they need to cover these losses. And of course, what it's letting them do, as we're noticing in this market, is cause them to become less aggressive to go out there and generate new loans. So even though the bank may perceive that the house values are increasing, because they're working with really great applicants, what's ending up happening is they have the confidence level to be able to go out there and finance these people. You know, today's loans are proportionately smaller to the house values uh, of the borrower's income and borrower's average credit as it was a long time ago. House prices are, are rising and they're not being destabilized by a so-called bubble of what we're saying because of the amount of equity that's, that's in there. But what's really going on here in the market is an interesting thought. So the question is, can appreciation continue 
if the bank does the opposite of what they did prior to 2008, which is restrict their lending practices. Does, will that cause prices to come down because homes aren't being bought by the end user? You see, what's driving our market right now are essentially two sets of people. There are people who are naturally going out there to buy properties because they are in the market to find a home, whether they're looking to expand on their home, to find a bigger place. Uh, you know, COVID maybe realize, made them realize that the home that they, are, they were in were maybe too small. They needed to go out there and upgrade their, their living space. Maybe they wanted a pool. Maybe they wanted an office in their home. So many other driving factors that are, that are allowing these changes to take place. And then on the other hand, you have this transitory demand, this demand coming from people that are visiting from Boston, from New York, from Chicago, that are fed up of paying high taxes in the cities that they're in and wanting to come to places like Florida to take advantage of them. There's also flippers, investors, speculators that are buying these properties because they're anticipating even further appreciation levels and basically buying these properties for profit. So this is the reason why we call them transitory buyers, because they're in the market for a short period of time and most likely will sell if the prices start to fall. My curiosity is whether or not this shift in paradigm or any kind of market adjustment will actually take place as a result of that segment of the market, as well as banks not lending versus the market crashing in a, in a traditional sense of the word uh, of the way we've understood it in the past. There definitely seems to be a shift in the market as we're noticing it. Is it slowing down? I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. People are settling into the homes that they've already purchased. Schools are about to start in a couple of weeks. And I think people are, are definitely, you know, not going and buying properties as aggressively as, as they were in April, May, let's call it that. So you do know. you think uh, August, September when the school, so, you know, normally summer after the rush of the summer is the end of kind of the home selling until like January of next year for the most part. Do, well, you, do you think we see that uh, kind of drop and slow down and finally the market, the inventory kind of picking back up when well, everybody that, settles down? I, I love that you brought that question up. You know, we've been talking about this for for weeks now. Yeah. And I, I'm beginning to feel that some of the things that we've talked about, whether you want to call them a forecast or a prediction, I don't know. Are, are starting to come down. Are we seeing a slowdown in the market? I don't know, maybe an adjustment. But what we're really seeing is that there's still buyers going out there to go out and buy properties. But there, there are not 22 property offers on the same property. They may be three or four or five. And one thing we've seen for sure is that the in April inventory, which was around 2,655 homes, that's 2,655 homes, has now increased to just over um, 3,000 homes, about 3,100 homes in the market. But what we've seen year over year is a 42% increase in the sale and 19% increase in the median price of these homes. Definitely a great sign, right? But even though the inventory is increasing, we've only seen basically a small percentage increase and we still have homes that only equate to about two weeks left of inventory in our market. So if everybody went, every agent went out there and, and served somebody to help them buy a home, there'd be no homes in the market in just over two weeks, right? The days on the market that these homes are, are staying have been reduced. And once again, I think it's because of this transitory uh, buyer that's purchasing these properties outright cash, which are reducing the number of days on the market. And, you know, the National Association of Realtors basically said inventory will grow as sellers have have been less hesitant to list their home as part of their personal health safety precaution. But now that more and more people are getting vaccinated, I think it's gonna encourage people to list and start to show their homes. I also believe that more sellers are wanting to jump into the market to take advantage of listing their home to get top dollar in this market because they're seeing this incredible appreciation that we're talking about. Freddie Mac forecasts that mortgage rates will continue to rise through the end of the year to about 3.4% and in Q4 and rising to about 3.8% in Q4 2022. That could also be a good sign to help stabilize or correct this increase in prices that we've been seeing here. I think all in all, this is exactly why there's a shift in the market. I think some buyers have experienced what they call buyer's fatigue. They've gone out and they've put out offers on 8, 10, 12, 14. I've heard 14. many people like that. Yeah, homes. And what they've realized is, 
you know what, maybe I'll just wait it out. I think a lot of them shifted to what I've seen in good stuff, which is the construction has finally kicked back up again. Well, uh, con- the, lumber prices yeah, have gone down sixty five percent. That's the the thing, lumber, and finally, you know, I, I a lot of family that's in that type of business, and they've seen uh, the prices coming down, uh, the inventory increasing. Uh, some of that product that has been held in ports because of COVID issue is finally shipping. Uh, those things are getting out there, and I, I've seen in the, just the past weeks some of the some of those places that they cleared the land, didn't touch them for weeks, and now all of a sudden there's workers out there and exactly. things are moving. So those new houses are finally starting to. But pop there's back still up. a shortage on a national level of about six million homes to catch up to the demand that's out there right now. So all of these trends are definitely positive ten- trends and moving towards a direction we'd want to see it at. I think more and more buyers are starting to realize that, you know what, we're not competing against many buyers, and that's definitely the message I want to put out there because I'm beginning to notice it. I think more buyers in this market today, towards the end of July, are are, are getting a better chance to go after a home that they want to buy have, rather than having to go out and compete against a number of other people. Yeah, I think you've seen a reduction of uh, the panic buyers. The people exactly. that went out there were like, I got to have a house. And if if I don't get a house now, there's not going to be any houses because everybody keeps telling me there's no houses available. And then they were throwing offers at anything that walked. But I, I think at the same time, as the bigger city started to open up and as the offices are requiring people to come back and work in their workplaces, it's obviously causing a shift back. So maybe a lot of these people ended up going to buy a a vacation home, for example, and started to consider that property as a second home or a vacation home in the new markets that they bought in. For example, Orlando or maybe even South Florida, West uh, West Coast of Florida, and so on and so forth. So I think it's really important for you to get a better sense of what's going on. And I'm always here to assist in any way that I can. If you want to reach out to me, the best way to reach out to me is at realsensenow.com. If you have any questions, We're live here on Florida Man Radio. You can catch us at 6.60 a.m., 105.5 in Walton Beach area. We're on 103.1. Or you can catch us online at floridamanradio.com. Ask Alexa. Hey, Alexa. I want to listen to Florida Man Radio and tune into my show this Saturday and every Saturday, 11 to 12. 